Corey Pine, thank you for finally returning to the Michael Brooks Show. The last time you were here, you were in studio and very lit. Is, is, is that right? I, I feel like I've been on since then, or maybe it was majority. I think I had you on majority since then. Well, uh, thanks, for, thanks for making it happen. Uh, I wasn't that drunk. I don't know that you were at all drunk. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I am, uh, I am in Canada now. I got here like two days ago. Oh, that's right. You mo- yeah. It's Canadian so journalist Corey Pine Big now. news. Uh, <laughs> Corey has upgraded from Portland, Oregon to Canada. How's the weather up there, how's eh? it, Yeah, how's the weather, dude? It's fucking freezing. It was eight degrees Fahrenheit today. <laughs> and I went out, I went out trying to find weed and, uh, they're, they're out everywhere. What do you mean they're out? Canada's out. Well, they le- of weed. they just legalized, and they don't. They didn't. They didn't send out enough to the shops. So. That literally sounds like an entourage episode. We didn't make enough. That sounds like an entourage episode. In fact, I think that was an entourage episode. L.A. went dry because of like a fire or something, and Vince couldn't get high. And then they well, found. Well, I need to make some friends up here. Like, so. Oh, we got weed. Let's go to Vegas. Yeah. Do you, you want to give out your location? You, to yeah. Try to find a. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you have any, if you have any patrons in Alberta, uh, <laughs> have them have them get in touch. <laughs> we might. We have a real Canadian contingent. Um. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Corey. I know how happy weed makes you. <laughs> it's more like it, it's not a question of happiness. It's a question of stability. Oh, right there you know. with you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, <laughs> Matt is very much on the <laughs> train. Um, I mean, everybody likes weed. It's a, it's Not everybody a, does like weed. A lot of people find it makes them paranoid or uncomfortable or whatever. So. See, I don't, know, I'm fine. not... I don't, I don't smoke that much, but I pretty much always like it when I do. I don't know. I don't get paranoid. On weed, I think I just don't like the slow reaction time, unless I'm in the right mood for it. Well, it sounds that... like you need to start dabbing. <laughs> I think the people that get pa- that get paranoid right. on weed aren't paranoid enough about the real world. Right, 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 right. Oh yeah, sure. Whoa, fucking you! I haven't <laughs> thought of that before, dude. Did you think of uh, what did William S. Burroughs say? He said that uh, he said a paranoid is someone with all the facts. Yes, and uh, and to re- reiterate a message that I've said many times before on uh, on the show, uh, you know, the most informed people I know are the most worried. That's the truth. I I want to say I remember one time I, uh, several years ago. This was a this was a really good. I I've smoked enough weed in my day to have like my that was a good high stories, and especially like you know like all of those stories. I don't know if they'll resonate with anybody else, but I'll tell it anyways. Cause I enjoyed it. I was hanging out with a couple of people, it was a mellow thing, like very Brooklyn brownstone apartment smoked. Uh, I immediately asked for Mexican food and got an order. And then one of the girls that was there, she, t- she was gossiping about, like it was like I don't know like one of her friends' boyfriends or something, and I remember she's like she she mi- she messed up have his cake and eat it too because she just turned and it's like he wants to have his cake and like more cake, like she just messed it up, <laughs> and I just started giggling, <laughs> like looking straight at her, and then I would pause for a couple of minutes and I would kind of close my eyes and be in my own space. And I would look up and I go, is the food here yet? And they go, no, 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 it's not here yet. And then I look at her and I start laughing again. <laughs> and I did that cycle like four times, five times, maybe more. And then I listened to Bob Marley on the roof and that was good. That sounds like a, uh, a perfect stunner moment. The only, the only thing missing is uh, someone sort of sanctimoniously piping up to say, how much gentler and uh, and more benign that was than had you been hammered on alcohol. <laughs> yeah, the contrast. See, if you were drunk, you would have been so mean about it. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, the uh, anyway, so I, I, I'm going to keep investigating this situation with the <laughs> weeds for shortage in Canada. Uh, but I, I, <laughs> the, I, I will the weed <laughs> shortage in Canada. <laughs> Corey Pine is done writing about corporate feudalism. He's found like a real story. <laughs> Where's the uh, fucking yeah. Canadian weed? <laughs> uh. So, Corey, did you read the New York Times uh, Facebook piece? Yo. Are you there? Yeah, we cut out for a second. Okay, yeah, of I course gonna... I read it. I mean, it was uh, everybody should read it. Uh, you know, I saw some people pointing out that um, they didn't see a lot of posts of it on Facebook for some reason. Hmm. It's almost like uh, a company that would hire uh, GOP smear artists to... Uh, spread anti-Semitic conspiracy theories while hiring another company to slander its critics as anti-Semitic is burying a big piece of bad news about itself. Mm. Who would have thought? Who would have done anything? Now, that being said, doesn't uh, Sheryl Sandberg come out like a very responsible corporate citizen? Uh I I don't have the stomach for this, but I wish someone would go back a few years and dig up all of the fluff pieces that were written about her. Yep. And just sort of pull out the choice parts. You know, there was a bit of that when uh, Theranos went down and people pulled up the New Yorker profile of Elizabeth Holmes uh and uh you know like the time magazine piece and just said like what what were these people smoking did, did they not do a minimal amount of research before they wrote these hagiographies and the answer is no of course they didn't <laughs> yeah, right uh, i was going to say <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know the, di- the of course not <laughs> the difference is with with sandberg and zuckerberg uh we're talking about people whose you know misconduct is uh, continuous and flagrant, and they're they're not they're not exactly well. Sandberg maybe so more so than Zuckerberg uh, uh, has has a better reputation, but they're not exactly like beloved figures. And what's uh, funny is he comes out better than she does, just in the very limited sense that he is clearly and especially like I don't know why you'd want to do this, but if you want, what I'm saying is like he is so clearly out of his depth and he's an egomaniac and he's deluded and he's totally committed and has no ethical qualms about what he's doing. But he's the one who really is more in like Silicon Valley, la la land where she's like the operator in the sense that she knows how Washington works. She knows what kind of firms you hire. She knows what offices need to be called. She knows how it works. And that comes across every second of the of the piece i think they both come off like complete sociopaths R- true not just with this latest story uh which you know to summarize in case anybody yeah, is please, yeah, summarize, watching or please. listening missed yeah. it i mean uh it, it's a it's a story by uh, multiple times reporters uh that unearthed a number of uh horrifying things about facebook's uh business practices but uh, probably the the top line item was the revelation that, as I summarized, they had actually hired a Republican uh, PR firm slash uh, research firm to spread, uh, uh, well, to, to, to link um, some of their uh, critics to uh, George Soros conspiracy. Now, now, this is in the context, obviously, of a, a huge wave of anti-Semitism in the U.S. stoked by the GOP. Uh, Soros, what was it, two weeks ago? It's hard to keep track now. Got a pipe bomb yep. in his mm-hmm. mailbox. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the guy they hired, as I, as I think I heard you point out on uh, Majority this morning, was uh, one of the Pod Save America guys. Hey, like uh, they're to- they're- welcome back to Pod Save America. We have a friend, Tim, who like totally is offended by Trump being tasteless. He's like, like we disagree on stuff, but like, Tim, what have you been up to this morning? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the the overall gist of the yeah. story though was that, that Zuckerberg and uh, Sandberg had uh, essentially ignored a lot of warnings about uh, from other management 
that the company was really screwing up in Myanmar and elsewhere uh, with the whole fake news uh, campaign, the Russian disinformation, uh, just really ignored tons of warnings and blamed subordinates. And, you know, Sandberg, uh, I, th- I believe CBS got a statement or a couple of questions uh, out of her today. Uh, and <laughs> her response was to blame subordinates again. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, it's also every, called that leaning done, in, Corey. Yeah, everything, <laughs> everything they've done in response to the story has essentially verified the substance of the story. Uh, right. Even though they're saying that, oh, we didn't, we didn't hire this firm to spread these, you know, this vile, hateful propaganda. Uh, <laughs> They're really saying, oh, well, it was like the PR team did it. I mean, imagine how, uh, imagine how, one, how, how it must be to work for these people, either directly for them or two levels down or at any level, um, if this is how they react under pressure. And, yep. you know, the, the other thing about this story is that it's, it's caused, you know, my book uh, that you plugged at the beginning, Live, Work, 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 Die, Journey to the Savage Heart of Silicon Valley, just got a very nice write-up in Jacobin, by the way. Uh, check it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was really nice. highly critical of Silicon Valley. And if anything, I'm coming to realize this week that I was wrong. I, I, gave, I was too generous <laughs> to these executives, if nothing else. I mean, the, the, level, of, the level of deception and, uh, you know, malevolence on display – uh, in that time story is, well, I put it in a tweet, I think is Exxon level evil. Yes. And it really is. Yes. I mean, they're not, it's not like they're extracting, uh, you know, fossil fuels and, and contributing to climate change, although they do in their own way. But the, Facebook is essentially selling itself as best I can figure as a kind of coup machine. I mean, when you look globally at what's been happening with this rising wave of fascism facebook is always right there right you know they bought whatsapp they bought whatsapp some years ago and that was a major uh factor in the bolsonaro that's right election yep. in brazil spreading misinformation yep. the same has been true in eastern europe and elsewhere in myanmar they contributed to a genocide yep uh the murder, you know which the genocide the of the rohingya uh, which is still one of the main issues of today. We're, we've talked about a touch on the show. We need, we will do more. Uh, it's implicated there, and at every step of the way, from you know the stuff that frankly is a problem, but more you know, I don't even want to say debatable, but more like, oh, look at this silly you know GOP propaganda that your grandmother shared, or look at this you know ridiculous like African Americans for Trump thing. Okay, whatever. But that still is propaganda. It still is misinformation. They do nothing about that. But this also runs straight through, like, you know, literally like the organization of digital lynch mobs and their sort yes. of default, oh, we're, we're a platform. And I will tell you that, there, you know, I sat, when I was reporting my book, I sat in conference rooms, big auditoriums in San Francisco, where Facebook sent managers to pitch government people on how to... Actually, this is a D.C. conference. I spoke. Uh, they were pitching all these government people and, and political consultants and whatnot on, you know, how to use Facebook to get their message across or to achieve certain goals. Yep. And I can only uh, suspect strongly, can't prove, that their collaboration with the uh, genocide Myanmar and with these other activities that we're hearing about uh, – you know, a lot of the blame has been pinned on uh, Cambridge Analytica, but I'm sh- I'm almost certain that Facebook's role is much more direct than has been reported. And we need congressional investigations to figure out exactly what's going on, because this company is setting itself self up as more important than the election process itself, right. uh, and more important than the news media. I mean, every single major media company is dependent on Facebook to reach its audience these days. You just enjoyed that Michael Brooks show video, and you can get a lot more by subscribing to us here at the Michael Brooks show YouTube channel. It's literally right there.